PWM block of MSP 430. So to select the PWM function of pins of MSP 430, we have to use these two registers that is PXL2 and PXSEL. So when these two bits are 0, 0, then IM functions are selected. For 0, 1, primary peripheral module function is selected. For 1, 0, it is reserved. And 1, 1 means secondary peripheral model function is selected. So using these two registers, we can select the function of particular pin of MSP430. This is the block diagram of PWM circuit. So, in this block diagram, here the capture compare resistor 1 is used and capture compare resistor 0 is used. Two 8-bit comparators are available there and the timer is used. So, 8-bit timer resistor, TAR resistor is used here and timer is used in up count mode. So, whenever we want to generate a PWM signal here, the initially the output is at logic 1. User has to load a count related to width of this pulse in TACCR1 register. That is duty cycle count will be loaded in TACCR1 register. Whereas count related to frequency of PWM signal should be loaded in this TACCR0 register. So the period data, period count should be loaded in CCR0 register and duty cycle count should be loaded in this CCR1 register. Initially, this TAR register is initialized with value 00H. When timer is started, this TAR count will be incremented by 1 and first this uh, upper 8-bit comparator will compare count of TAR register with count stored in TACCR1 register. When it matches, the signal will be generated and that will be given to reset terminal of this latch. So latch will reset and output will switch from logic 1 to logic 0. So after this duty cycle value, output will switch from logic 1 to 0. So now output is at 0. And this lower comparator will start comparing the count of TAR resistor with CCR0 resistor. So when this both counts will be equal, it will generate a signal which is given to set terminal of this lag. And at the same time, it will give a signal to TAR resistor and the count of TAR resistor will be roll over to 00H. Now since signal is given to set terminal, the logic 0 will be switched to logic 1. So after this time period, the output will switch from logic 0 to logic 1. So this process will generate a one cycle of PWM signal. And this process will be repeated continuously and will get a continuous PWM signal generated at output terminal. This PWM output is available at pin P1.2 of this uh, MSP430 microcontroller that is pin 1 of this TA0 timer. The clock for this PWM signal can be selected. So clock select is also available on which the count of TAR register will be incremented. So this is the operation of PWM circuit of this timer. So pin used for PWM is P1.2. PWM function we have to select for the particular pin. And for that we have to initialize P1 cell register with value 0x04. P1 DIR register should be initialized to value 0x04 because we are using P1.0. So LSB bit is for P1.0 then next is for p1.1 and this bit is for p1.2 so this bit should be 1 uh, to select the direction of this pin 
then this TACCTL control register should be initialized with PWM mode. So various modes are available uh, for this PWM operation. If we write out mode 0, then PWM is disabled. Out mode underscore 1 is to set. Then out mode underscore 2 is PWM toggle reset. So we have to use this out mode underscore saver. That is PWM reset and set. So because of this, the continuous PWM signal will be generated at pin P1.2. So to write this program, first we have to include this header file msp430g2553.h. So this header file depends upon which msp430 microcontroller you are using in your application. So in main program, first instruction is to disable the watchdog timer. So to stop watchdog timer, we'll use this instruction. Then select the direction of this P1 port. So we are initializing P1 DIR resistor with value 0x04. Then we are selecting a function of this output signal. So we have to initialize P1 select resistor with value 0x04. Then this TACCR0 is initialized with FFH. This value is related to total period of PWM signal. So since this resistor is 8 bit, we are using a full count. Full count is stored in this resistor. Then in CCR1 resistor, we have to store a count related to PWM width. That is T on period. So here I have stored 20H. By changing this value, you can change the width of T on period of this PWM signal. Then we have to select output mode of this PWM block. So TACCTL1 is initialized with output mode 7. That is reset set output mode. Then next we have to select the clock signal. Then we have to select the divide frequency and the mode of this counter. So here up mode of counter is selected. After that, we'll use the instruction to enter this microcontroller in low power mode. And then instead of while 1, here for loop is used. So continuously microcontroller will execute this instruction. Instead of this instruction, you can use while 1 also. So we can use here while 1 and then semicolon. So continuously microcontroller will execute this instruction.